The Vertol Model 76, better known as the VZ-2, had a peculiar appearance. Most of its tubular framework was exposed, and from the front, it looked like a helicopter. However, this was a remarkable aircraft that could transition from vertical to horizontal flight thanks to its tilt wing. This experimental vehicle was built for the U.S. Army in the mid-1950s to prove the concept of vertical takeoff and landing. This footage shows the fragile-looking aircraft hovering during one of its earliest tests, intended to ascertain if it could shift from horizontal flight to a vertical landing. This revolutionary program lasted almost a decade, in which the VZ-2 completed 450 flights. Before being bought by Boeing, Vertol Corporation was one of the largest independent manufacturers of helicopters. On April 15, 1956, the company won a contract by the Office of Naval Research to design, construct, and conduct flight tests for a particular research vehicle. The aircraft, funded by the U.S. Army, would demonstrate the tilt-wing approach to vertical takeoff and landing in a short time and at a low cost. For years, the Army had explored vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. As the name suggests, these vehicles can hover, take off, and land vertically like helicopters. The experimental Gyrodyne McDonnell XV-1 and the tilt rotor Bell XV-3 had already proven they could hover like helicopters, but they required a higher top speed than conventional rotary wing aircraft. The challenge for Vertol was building an aircraft with two different control mechanisms. The first would fly in a helicopter-like vertical mode. The second would allow it to fly horizontally like an airplane. The transition would be possible thanks to the tilt wing, which would rotate through takeoff, flight, and landing. To keep the vehicle's development expenses to a minimum, Vertol used standard components and tried to keep the aircraft's size as small as possible. Still, the design costs added up to $850,000, a staggering amount for the time. Less than a year after signing the contract, Vertol presented the VZ-2. This peculiar aircraft had most of the turbular fuselage exposed, which gave it a frail-looking appearance. From the front, anyone could have thought they were looking at a helicopter. The VZ-2 had a bubble-shaped cockpit located forward of the wing pivot point that could fit a two-man crew. It also had a high T-tail to move control surfaces. The system incorporated a vertical rudder and a stabilator, which helped maintain pitch and yaw control. The VZ-2 had a small wingspan and was relatively light, weighing only over 3,100 pounds. Before the VZ-2 took off, several ground instability tests, preliminary 10-hour tie-downs, and taxi tests were conducted. The Army planned a three-stage flight test program, beginning by demonstrating the conversion capabilities of the aircraft. The VZ-2 took its maiden flight on August 13, 1957. Test pilot Leonard Lavasser flew the aircraft only in vertical mode. On a second test, he piloted the vehicle horizontally. It wasn't until July 15, 1958, that Lavasser could complete a vertical to horizontal transition flight. In total, 11 pilots tested the VZ-2. This footage shows one of the earliest tests, described by the press as follows, quote, The pilot lifted this aircraft as a helicopter, tilted the wings for a short horizontal flight, then converted back to hover and a vertical landing. The second testing stage began in April of 1959 at the Vertol Division in Philadelphia and at Edwards Air Force Base in California. An ejection seat was added to the cockpit, which required modification of the fuselage's nose. This stage uncovered problems with the partial power descent and directional stability deficiencies in forward flight. However, those issues were quickly corrected. The aircraft was sent to NASA for further evaluation since the Army didn't have any pilots qualified to fly vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. NASA placed the VZ-2 in the full-scale wind tunnel at Langley Field to examine its aerodynamic characteristics. These tests proved that the VZ-2 could handle vertical takeoff and landing better than other vehicles. Still, during the transition from vertical to horizontal flight, the aircraft faced severe buffeting and loss of roll stability. Vertol decided to cover part of the exposed fuselage and replace the wing with a new one with flaps. These changes helped reduce most of the buffeting. 
Through the years, the vertical logged 454.5 hours, of which 73.2 were in free flight. This impressive flight record cemented the aircraft's reputation as a world-class technology demonstrator. New experimentation on vertical takeoff and landing aircraft was halted in the 1960s due to Secretary of Defense McNamara's opposition to expensive military research programs. Test of the VZ-2 managed to continue until 1965. In total, it completed 450 flights, over 200 partial transitions, and 34 full conversions. After its retirement, the vehicle was granted a place of honor in the Smithsonian Institution's rare bird alcove. Even though the program didn't achieve commercial viability, the vehicle was considered an extremely successful technology demonstrator. When experimentation was resumed a decade later, it was determined that tilt rotors worked better than tilt wings.